I'm here at the flagship Converse store in Los Angeles. And what's amazing about this store is that you can actually customize your kits. Basically, anything that you want, they'll do for you. Embroidery and patches. You can pick any shoe off the wall and do anything you want to it. And what's amazing is that they get to know exactly what you want and they get to do it for you at a price that's reasonable. And that's where we're going to start off today. Customization and feedback. That's our segue to get into custom conversion events. Converse has made a huge play to become a dominant force in the sneaker game by listening to their customers. And I'm going to show you how to do the same thing inside of your Facebook ad account. So let's get back to Disruptor HQ and we're going to break this down with a few case studies of brands you've probably heard of that I've been talking to over the years. And let's spill some of the secrets. So over the last three months, I've had the pleasure of having conversations with three nine-figure direct-to-consumer businesses and also three dozen seven- and eight-figure businesses that all seem to have had a great Q4, a great Q1. Most of them saw 50 to 70% growth. A couple of them saw upwards of 200% growth. We're going to get to that in a little bit. And they all seem to have the same problem. They're stuck because of their data. And whether they went all in on cost caps or they've segmented everything they possibly can, ultimately they've found that they are at a brick wall of just how much better they can make Facebook look. And they were all giving up. They were not utilizing this one simple tool. And in doing so after our conversations, they were all able to begin to access exponential growth. And I'm gonna share with you today what that is, how to do it, and a couple of case studies where when I've used it, we've seen two or 300% growth. So with that being said, let's get into it. So let's start off at the basics. Every conversion event is being tracked, right? And for these brands, it happened to be a purchase event. Although in one of the businesses we're gonna talk about, it was a lead. So for you lead gen folks, this 100% also applies to you. The problem is that if everything is a purchase, then all transactions are basically treated by the machine as binary, yes or no. This means that if Birkin wants to sell a $40,000 bag or somebody buys a $10 gift card, Facebook sees that as a successful purchase with no real qualitative delineation between those two points, although clearly they have dramatically different value to the business. This also means that they're far less able to understand what actions are being taken from any one particular ad or by users on their site outside of their CRO tools, but their CRO tools aren't necessarily pointing back to any individual ad. There's a massive disconnect in the business intelligence. So let's fix that. Basically, every brand that I was talking to in the last three months faced one of, if not more of, the following three issues. The first was that they felt their pixel had been trained to go after the wrong kind of person. The second most common issue is that the pixel information was somehow wrong. It was over counting purchases or the AOV was way off and they weren't able to trust what they were seeing in the platform. And the third problem, which may have been the most common because I saw it among brands doing seven figures a year, those doing seven figures a month and those doing seven figures a week. And as they spent more money on that ad, they weren't seeing that individual item sell through in a way that directly correlated with ad spend and it became very difficult to understand attribution. And almost all of them ultimately decided to invest heavily in multiple attribution tools. And I saw evidences of North Beam dashboards and Ad Beacon, of course, Triple Whale and Rockerbox and far more elaborate tools. And even one of them had a high rows thing that was set up that was extraordinarily elaborate. And my point here today is not that those tools aren't useful. It's that we don't need them at all. It's not that these tools aren't valuable, it's that they actually just don't solve any of these three problems. All three of these problems are overwhelmingly just a misconception of what's going on in the data and easily solvable through custom conversion events. 
So let's talk about our friends at Portland Leather Goods, which by the way, I think is probably the best leather goods company in the world and run by one of the best teams and the man behind everything, Curtis, is one of the greatest individual people I've ever met. They have a lot of amazing products and full disclosure, they're a nine figure business and they didn't used to be. They've been growing by 2X basically every single year. Now, a lot of these sales basically come down to a couple hero products. My wife's favorite happens to be their circle bag, and that is one of their hero products. We've taken it to London, we've taken it to New York, we were in Paris at the Louvre, and she fit in and actually outshined a lot of people that were spending 10 times as much on their luggage and what they were using to look cool and the bags that they carried around the city. These things are fire. I just like, they are gorgeous products, and big shout out to Curtis for making them. The thing is, when somebody buys potentially one of their lovely rainbow fringe jackets, this is my wife enjoying hers, and she loves it. Facebook doesn't actually see that as a different person. Facebook is seeing that purchase event fire. So if somebody's buying a coin purse, a circle bag, an over the shoulder bag, or a pair of shoes, or even one of these lovely rainbow fringe jackets, Facebook is just basically seeing it as purchase. However, the AOV of these customers, the PSM of these customers, the future cash flow of people that buy a circle bag as their first item, or somebody that bought the rainbow fringe, or even one of the little coin purses is dramatically different. And when we're optimizing to get the lowest customer acquisition cost and the lowest CPA, so if the ad makes a sale happen, great, that's a win. The problem is if somebody spends $30 on a coin purse or $500 on a jacket, which ad is going to be championed by the machine if the purchase event is just purchase? Well, we as marketers and specifically performance marketers are going to go after the one that has the lowest cost. You're going to turn off the CPA of 80, even though the margin is exponentially larger and the future cash flow of that customer might be three to five times more money. And that can be incredibly impactful when understanding the data integrity of what's actually being bought at the pixel level. The problem is because you're focusing on Facebook trying to get the cheapest CPA, you end up training the machine to go after whoever is going to be the easiest to convert, but that does not mean it's going to be on the product that you're actually advertising. Now, another issue we're going to fix with custom conversion events is this incongruency of AOV. How often have you said that Facebook is broken because one day the AOV is $43 and the next it's $200? It's not that the pixel is wrong, it's just that people aren't necessarily buying what you're promoting. Famous examples of this are McDonald's and Nike. While the Big Mac is the single most aggressively promoted product at McDonald's, it by no means reflects anything close to the most commonly bought item. And for decades, the Jordan was the single most heavily and aggressively promoted item at Nike, and it never once came close to representing nearly as much of their percentage of sales as their ad spend. Long story short, when people click on your ad, and they come to your store, that does not mean that the item they buy is exactly what they clicked on. They're gonna be walking down different aisles, they're gonna be checking out different things on different shelves. And there's no reason that the item they ultimately check out with has anything to do with the ad that they clicked on. Utilization of custom conversion events can allow us to see what items are people actually converting on. For instance, with a brand like Under Outfit, a darling of the Facebook Ads MBA program, and we've talked about this before, that they came in in the summer of 2021 doing 50K a month, and within less than a year and a half, we were doing over a million dollars a week. Now, the vast majority of that money was spent on the comfort shaping bra, but by no means was that the only thing people bought when they clicked on that ad. And one of those ads, in just a matter of months, ended up spending over $2 million, which to be fair, outpaced the actual business revenue in the year prior. That's amazing. 
Having custom conversion events though allowed us to understand what types of ads and led to people buying the bra versus the cami or the gift card. Or to be fair, any number of many other amazing products built by the business, but now we could understand the correlation between certain ad concepts selling certain types of products. Let's take an example of a lovely brand called Made by Mary, which used to be an Etsy store and it still is, but now they've actually scaled their Shopify to, let's politely put, well past a seven figure business. When we installed custom conversion events, we were able to see that some ads absolutely sold the live in hoops. But some live in hoop ads also were great at converting people on the personalized necklaces and all the upsells and many other products in their store. We could even add a custom conversion event to track that users took the upsell and which one they were buying. We became far more informed on what ads weren't just driving the sale of the earrings, but what ads also far more heavily indexed towards people that were taking the upsell and which ones dramatically improved the likelihood of somebody having an exponentially higher AOV or buying gift cards or ultimately which customers have the much better PSM and getting that back down to a creative concept or even post ID. And if you happen to know what types of ads drive not only the sale of the product you're promoting but also get people to take the upsell and improve the AOV and ultimately maybe a bundle where those customers are far more likely to buy a second or third time, then you can ultimately optimize for much greater cash flow and much better LTV and the efficiency around the CPA becomes far less important. Let's take a quick break and do some math. If you know that you could get a sale for 10% cheaper on the best ad and it gets that customer to buy that thing, awesome. What if, however, for 10% more, that customer was two or three times more likely to spend three to five times as much, and you got a two or three X multiple on the lifetime value of the average customer that bought that product? If the difference between 10% on the CPA is several hundred dollars in lifetime value, are you really doing the best service as a performance marketer to drive the lowest CPA? The answer is no. And yes, of course, this also directly invalidates the intellectually dishonest approach of a lot of ad agencies and performance marketers who claim that ROAS is everything and the lowest CPA is all you need and selling every product at the greatest margin according to attribution on day one is the crowning achievement of any performance marketer. My point here is that if you're not using custom conversion events, that's true because you're not actually leveraging the business intelligence to know what types of customers are better or worse. But as soon as you do that, the ROAS of that initial transaction becomes far less important than the PSM of that customer. Because again, if you could save 10% on the cost per acquisition and you got one sale cheaper, great. But if you didn't save that and that customer to spend 500 to $1,000 more over the next six to nine months, wouldn't you do that every Every single day and three times on Sunday and beg for 10 times more every single time you open up the ad account? Of course you would. And of course this also begins to solve the third problem that we were discussing and not knowing what products your ads are actually selling. Because ultimately you're going to be able to understand what type of attention your ads are attracting, which is also very applicable to lead gen marketers. So let's get into a case study around me implementing this and some lead gen efforts. Back in the day, I was working with a brand called Key Cafe. It's one of those businesses where you take your phone and you go up to a little kiosk and a little door pops open and you get your key. When we were trying to expand that business, we were doing it on a lead gen basis because let's be fair, it's more or less a B2B company. And we also knew that the conversion rate of each lead was dramatically different. And this is old news for the people in the lead gen space, but if you're in the coaching space, understanding the quality of the lead and the value, volume, and cost of getting those individuals becomes immensely important because you are trying to make sure that your closers are busy all the time, but not waste a single moment of their workday. And we began to track the quality of the lead based on how they filled out a lead form or what information they gave us. We were able to optimize the creative for the qualitative value of those leads. And in this case, car dealerships, shared workspaces, and construction sites ended up being far more valuable. Maybe the lead was more expensive. 
but the conversion rate and the actual amount of revenue those customers delivered was exponentially more valuable than a lot of the other options that we went after. And instead of just trying to fill up our lead funnel with as many leads as possible, we took a specific approach of maximizing the volume of quality leads because we were able to get down to a unit value of the lead based on how that individual filled out the lead form and what market they were in. This meant that we could deliver exponentially better quality and volume of leads because now we could create a test to reduce the CPL on those super high quality leads and make sure that when somebody showed up to start calling customers, when somebody was dealing with leads, every single day, all they dealt with was the highest quality leads. And when you optimize for volume and quality and you reduce your cost to make sure that you can get the most amount of margin, you can do tremendous things with your business. And to be fair, this directly translated to us astronomically higher revenue for the business and reduced ad spend, which if you're a business running on commission, you would never say is a win, but because you care about the bottom line and the finance department is your ultimate boss as a growth marketer, not a performance marketer who's insecure, but a growth marketer who cares about the bottom line, that's a massive boon to your relationship with the client. Now I know this sounds great, but how do we take action on this stuff? Now there are three different ways of doing this. And the first one I'm gonna give you is probably the one that requires the most amount of dev work, but is the hardest to screw up. The second option is one of the most common that I see people talking about. And the third one, the third one is the one that I use on basically every single ad account, even if I'm spending only a hundred bucks a day. And believe me, if I'm spending 50 to or hundred thousand dollars a day, not a single penny spent is not being tracked using these methodologies. All right, let's get to step number one. To be fair, the right fit for you might not be the right fit for somebody else. So let's start at the most basic level. The first option is to basically just hard code custom events onto your website. And you've seen me do this before when doing lead gen videos, like, like when I showed you how I was setting up the ad campaigns for Alex Ramosi's $100 million book premiere. And these custom hard coded events aren't necessarily a bad thing as long as you're not getting rid of the standard event. Because remember, standard events are basically the data set that Facebook uses in advanced matching so that broad targeting can work. And the second option here is to make a custom conversion event in the event manager that basically says, standard event where product ID or URL contains X, Y, and Z. So for instance, this might look like purchase event fires where the thank you page also says gift card or purchase event fires and the product ID contains that ugly string of characters that means, hey, they bought that $200 gift card for 150 bucks. Shout out to the last video about gift cards. And if you're not using gift cards, I promise you, you are throwing money away. But again, there's a beautiful video and I'll link it right there. Boom, go check that out. If you're still running discounts or a cash back, this will fundamentally change your cash flow. All right, let's get back to it. Now, not only is it useful to understand those things, but it's also very helpful to say, oh, somebody took an upsell or even more importantly, which upsells did they take? You can track all of that just as somebody inside the Facebook ads manager, just inside the events manager with literally knowing very little other than the thank you URL or just the product ID, which you can find in your commerce manager. So now it's not just 100 people purchased, but 100 people purchased and 12 of them took the upsell for the gift card. And we might notice that 11 of those people that took that gift card all came from the same dynamic creative concept. And while that concept CPA might be a little bit higher, we might know, hey, these people are having a much better AOV and every one of them that is taking this gift card is worth exponentially more on the PSM. Should we turn this off because the CPA is 5% higher if the LTV is two and a half times better? No. And to be fair, the performance marketers behind things like cost caps will immediately eliminate those higher cost purchases because the day one efficiency isn't nearly as good. And if the AOV is higher, they're not gonna be able to point to why is it higher? And what we're talking about here is we're gonna be able to understand at a creative testing level, what ways of communicating ultimately drives higher value customers that are worth more money and give us a more desirable cash flow with a greater LTV. And literally that comes down to the creative itself. 
When you're doing lead gen, you can find super low quality leads and super high quality leads. In the case of that Key Cafe example from earlier, we noticed that car dealerships were one of the best customers. And as a matter of fact, when we leaned way into it, they landed the corporate account of Tesla. Shortly thereafter, they let me go. And to be fair, like that hurts, but ultimately, I did my job so well they didn't need performance and growth marketing anymore because their business relationship was with a global account and Elon Musk mazel tov to them. Now for my favorite and the absolute best execution of custom conversion. This is the action that the ad is actually optimizing towards. Now up to this point, we basically said, hey, the ad set is optimizing towards a purchase and we also have this additional column for business intelligence. Great. Now, if we had a campaign that was trying to sell those circle bags and instead of just optimizing towards a purchase and then optimizing the creative after the fact strategically to the ones that lead to the sale of that circle bag most effectively, what if we actually said instead of a purchase, go after a circle bag buyer? What if every sale compounded the value and ultimately trained the machine to focus on that type of customer more effectively, but in a way that didn't pollute the rest of the customer? You could have a campaign that was focusing on the sale of that circle bag and another campaign that was focusing on the sale of a cross body and another campaign that was focusing on the sale of those rainbow fringe. And if they all have different business objectives with different PSMs, that's completely allowable. And because they're not all focusing on a purchase event, you're not training the pixel to go after the wrong type of customer. In fact, you're training the pixel to be even better because it's not actually the pixel doing the work. You are now having separate folders of data and you are building up the quality of your data integrity for compounding value in machine learning. This, this is where the actual work gets done. Like I said before, being a good media buyer is like being a good chef at Pizza Hut. Give me two or three weeks and you're basically as good as anybody else in the world will ever get. When we talk about this stuff, these are the secrets to growth marketing that help brands grow by two, three, four, five X a year. This is how brands like Under Outfit got from 50K a month to over a million a week. This is the types of things that Portland Leather is going to do to go from a little over a hundred million dollars to well over a billion dollars. These are the things that separate the folks who work really hard and test a whole bunch of things from the folks who actually do hard thinking and let the machine do all that. Now again, we talked about Under Outfit before and when we did this strategically to try to sell that $200 gift card where we sold it for 150 bucks and if you remember from the gift card video, assuming a 30% breakage, which is industry standard as shown by Guthy Ranker and Retail Me Not and a bunch of other, just like that's the standard, then basically we are selling you a $200 gift card for 150 bucks and we know you're roughly gonna spend on average 130, 140 dollars and we can focus on the types of people that want to buy that gift card with those ads. It's not just doing CRO to make our landing page convert better, it's doing CRO inside the machine learning so the people that the ads are being shown to are more likely to want to buy in the first place. Now where this really gets fun is when you start to take this into other actions and this will be the last example today. When I was working on several flower delivery businesses and a lot of Amazon businesses that are trying to go to Shopify, shout out if you're an Amazon million dollar seller trying to get your Shopify going, it is a different beast and I get that. Especially if you have subscribe and save, like why is anybody gonna come to your site? Well, let's work on actually making an offer that'll convert them and training the machine to do a better job at doing it. This is the elite tier utilization of custom conversion events with hard coded stuff and custom columns and training the machine to do it. Let's actually focus on subscription as an event. Let's actually sell not just the flower, but let's buy somebody who wants flowers delivered every week. Let's not just try to compete with Amazon subscribe and save. What if we said a purchase event is great, but if somebody takes the upsell to a subscription, it actually expires as a subscription event. Now I know subscription is actually a standard event, but you can make it not only a standard event, but you can have the upsell to a subscription be a custom conversion event. And you can ultimately understand when somebody takes a purchase and when they take that leap towards the subscription. And if you begin to optimize your ads that have been trained on getting the conversion of a purchase and you then make some ad sets or even its own campaign where it's focusing on the people that take that purchase and then upsell, you're gonna understand 
what the unit value is of somebody taking that upsell, and then ultimately training the machine to deliver you more valuable future cash flow at below cost. This is how you dramatically improve your bottom line. Because at some point when we were doing this at many different brands, we were getting more money a day from subscribers and from those types of reoccurring revenue sources than we were spending on ads. If you're spending 75% of your reoccurring revenue on ads on a daily basis, imagine what happens with the value of all of the profit you make from people that are buying off of Amazon, people that are buying off of Google, people that are buying off of email, people who are making their first purchase, and, and the organic lift that you get to just direct traffic. That's all profit. And you can get better and better at acquiring that more valuable transaction because you're training the machine to see that purchase as something different. It's not just a purchase or maybe a subscriber, it's a purchaser that takes the upsell to the subscription and we've got a whole bunch of ads that are good at driving that purchase. Now let's take those ads and say, go out and get this purchase and I'll reward you, cherry pick the ones that are best at getting that subscription and then we can make the, that upsell what we're advertising, what we're actually making the ad account focus on in that particular campaign. And maybe it costs two or three times as much at a CPA level, but if they stick around for six or nine months, then you're paying a small premium for way more money and you're waking up with money in the mailbox on a daily basis from doing this over and over and over again. And fun fact, it doesn't mean that you're not getting purchases. They have to purchase to still get that thing. So even though people aren't necessarily always taking that subscription upsell, the more effective you get at getting that subscription upsell to occur, the cheaper the cost per purchase is going to be on that effort. And if you can break even on getting purchases, and oh, by the way, one out of every three, one out of every 10 people takes a subscription that's worth six to nine months of revenue, that's free money in the bank. Basically, everything else you're doing is just a lead gen effort, direct to consumer market is basically lead gen to long-term customer journeys. And if you're treating every single transaction in your business as a purchase, you're not leveraging any of it. This type of effort, I would say on average, for my favorite, that third one we talked about, takes about 10 minutes per SKU. If you knew that you were to take 10 minutes to optimize the way the machine sees your data and the net result could be a two or three X lift in the lifetime value of your customers and a 50% lift in your reoccurring revenue on a daily basis and ultimately you could 10 X that reoccurring revenue over the next year, would you not spend that 10 minutes? If you have a dozen different products, this is two hours. This is an afternoon. If you were to spend an afternoon and like, I'm talking after lunch, have a couple drinks, come back, take a coffee, knock this stuff out and leave early. And that effort was at the core of how your Facebook marketing was able to help you see 10X the growth that you did the year before. And I'm talking legitimate numbers. Like we saw with Taylor Holiday's brand last year, they grew by 30%. I had a brand last year that doing this stuff grew by 300%. My point here is that performance marketers don't really grow businesses. They get you to be more efficient, but growth marketers understand how to access fractional banking and cash flow so that you can exponentially take advantage of the marketplace and use the tools in the way they were designed. The point here is pretty simple. Every time you pick up a quarter, there's three more dimes or a half dollar or even maybe two, three silver dollars sitting on the ground and you're just not even seeing that they exist. This is very much a situation of ultimately sort of like they live right like you put on the glasses and you see everything in a way that you never did before this is the matrix at some point you're not gonna have to dodge bullets anymore and this is the excitement and the joy and everyone that i talk to says the same thing the confidence that you deserve and so that being said um, a big shout out to Converse for letting me film in their space today. Also big shout out to my friends at Key Cafe and at Portland Leather Goods and at Under Outfit. It was funny, I was uh, watching Roku today while feeding my little baby girl with a bottle and an Under Outfit ad came on and I was just like, man. And there's a lot of people that are like, well, we can't do that because we don't have the cash flow and these are really rich businesses. They weren't when we got started. Three 10 Nutrition wasn't a hundred million dollar brand when I rolled in. The, what, what separates brands from struggling to make Facebook work to spending their time and energy doing far more powerful things is the utilization of the tools. 
and overwhelmingly, especially in the end of January and February and moving into March, I got into so many conversations where quote unquote elite marketers were blaming their tools. The folks that did stuff like this, not a single one of them made that excuse. No, they were too busy cashing checks and growing their businesses to complain about some little game genie breaking. And if you don't feel confident in your ability to do this in your business, as always, once again, there's the Facebook Ads MBA program. Check it out. That's the QR code for you to dive in. And, and like I say in every video, hundreds of people have gone through that. Not a single person has completed that program and asked for their money. I get dozens of folks to go through that every year, but ROI within the first couple of weeks. What we're trying to do is ultimately create a much better place for everyone. And that's what this is all about. So that being said, again, always like and subscribe. I think if I don't say that, YouTube will take me off. And um, yeah, my commitment to you this year was to show you all of the things. Teach you my team was to show you all of the things. I wanted to introduce you to my team, show you all my tools, how I think about stuff, and ultimately make success a choice where you can either dive in and believe me, you should. The water's warm. It's like right now, you're sitting out in the parking lot at Disneyland and we're just enjoying the ride. And you're welcome. It's a beautiful place to be, and you deserve it. So once again, as always, thank you very much, and I'll see you on the internet.